This video is going to show you how to make grass, either stylized or realistic, with plants or without plants, for all your foliage needs. I'm Grant Abbott from Gabbit Media, and if you like what I do, then do check out the playlist on this channel or my website for more great content. Also, this is the long way of making grass, and if you want a quick fix, then check out my other videos on making grass. All the links are in the description. Lastly, if you want to download the grass models that I have, that link is also in the description. So the way we're going to make grass is by creating one clump of grass and then using a particle system to duplicate that all over our mesh. So let's start off by creating the grass itself. If you just want to know about the particle system and putting this grass on the plane, then you can download my grass from the link in the description and you can skip to the particle bit. But for all those who want to make their own, let's go through it. So I'll select all the objects in my scene with A and delete and shift A to add mesh and plane. So I'm starting with a plane and I'm going to create one strand of grass. So I'll rotate this in the x-axis 90 degrees, R, X, then 90, and press enter. And then I'll scale it in the X, so S then X, to scale it in. Somewhere around there. Let's zoom in on that with period key on my numpad, into edit mode with tab, and control R to create a loop cut. And I'll do two of those, I think. Nice, simple, basic grass. Left click to set those, and I can obviously move them around, and then left click to set that position. And let's just make this a bit more grass-like, so I'll scale these top ones, and scale this bottom one. And shall we, I'll make this a little bit wider. Maybe a touch thinner there, that's better. Okay, so with that single strand, I'm going to distort it slightly. The easiest way to do this is to come up to the proportional edit, up here, and then grab an edge, so I'm in edge mode up here, or two on your keyboard is the shortcut for that. Select one of these and G to grab, and you can see that big circle, I call that the circle of influence, and you can use your wheel to change how much of an influence you're having on the other parts of the mesh. And that's what proportional editing does. So I'll grab that, I can rotate it as well, and that affects the shape as well. So just pulling your blade of grass or your strand of grass into position so it looks kind of grassy. Now, if you think this isn't smooth enough for your liking, you can obviously select a couple of edges and press Control B to bevel them, and that will kind of smooth it out for you. And I'll scale that one in a little bit, and there we go, we've got a blade of grass there looking great. But that's just one blade, we want to do a bit more than that. So still in edit mode, I'm going to select everything, and Shift D to duplicate, and just move it to the side slightly there. R then Z. Ah, now because I've got proportional edit on, it's affecting my whole shape. So I'll undo that and turn off the proportional edit and R then Z to turn that round. And let's just position that so it's kind of coming out of the same area at the base just there. So somewhere around there. And that looks okay, but we'll just modify it slightly. Now if I turn the proportional edit on again, I can select this end shape here, but I've always got the problem that I might affect the rest of my grass blades. Well, I'll right click to cancel that. You can come into the proportional edit and say connected only. So when I grab this one here, you can see it's only affecting the connected vertices. So let's start editing this slightly, rotate by the Z. Just move that across a bit, and this one will curve around a bit more, something like that. So I can select all again, and this time I'm selecting both, and that's by pressing A on my keyboard, Shift D to duplicate, and then R then Z to move that duplication around a bit. G to grab, R to rotate, and I've still got proportional edit on, but it is still connected only. And because I've got these two selected, I can affect them both, so I'll make them a bit shorter, bring that down, and let's grab this one and start affecting them individually now. Okay, it's a bit of a wide blade of grass, so I'll scale some of these faces in. And we're almost there, I'll just do another couple, so I'll select this one with L, which is link select, so it selects that separate shape there and let's shift each duplicate and R then Z and move that again into position. Let's modify the shape slightly. Okay, so I'll do a touch more modifications just to stop too much overlap. I think that will look a little bit better. And there we go, we've got a kind of clump of grass. Now, what I suggest doing is creating three of these of different shapes and sizes, so different height in the Z, but also just different shapes in general. So Shift D to duplicate that one, and let's just edit this slightly. Try and make it look a fair bit different, but you don't have to go overboard with that. So I'm just twisting these around the place and making it a different shape. Using three different clumps of grass will have a lot more control over the variation. So there's another version, and I'll duplicate that one, and I'll modify it once again. 
And this time I'm deleting some of the faces and just moving them around so it's got a bit more distortion. But again, just make sure it's different from the other ones. Okay, so we've got our three grasses there. Now we need a plane or some sort of object for them to go onto. So Shift A to add, mesh, and then plane. So we're going to add three different particle systems to our plane for the different grasses. That will add a nice bit of variation and it will give us a nice lot of control. So with the plane selected, we can come across to the particle properties tab just here and click a new particle system. Now, initially you get this emitter and if I press spacebar, you can see all these balls falling down. Well, we need to be on hair. So if I change it to hair, we get these strands. The next thing you want to check is the advanced box that will give you the rotation option here, which we'll need. And let's scroll down to where it says render. You might need to press the disclosure arrow in order to see this. And at the moment it's rendering as a path. So these are all paths. We can change that here to object. They all disappear because we need to actually choose our object. So let's scroll down a little bit further and click on the pipette and choose a clump of grass. And you can see it's populated it with that object. Now we've got a few problems. One, it's the wrong way around. We need it pointing upwards. Now there's an option here, object rotation. If we tick on that, it doesn't work. Now that's because if I click on my clump of grass and press N to bring up my items transforms, it's actually got some rotation on it already. And the particle system is nullifying this rotation and putting it where it should be. So if I click on all these and change them to zero, you can see that's lying down and now they're upright. Now, unfortunately, this bit's really unintuitive because Blender seems to like these objects lying down in order for them to point upwards. It's very strange to me, but I'm sure there's some clever mathematical reason for this. So having it lying down like this, it will actually point upwards on our object. The best way I see for beginners to get their head around this is to go into edit mode and to make sure you've got the right way, just rotate it in edit mode to see which way is pointing upwards and then you know you'll have the right way. It should be 90 degrees in the Y axis, but it's worth checking and moving it around in edit mode just to make sure you've got it right. What you'll also want to do, as you can see my grass is halfway through my plane here, you'll need to come across to your object and I'll press G to grab in the X axis and I'm moving the object origin to the bottom. And let's see what that does to our grass. It moves it above the plane. So always have the object origin at the base. And whilst in edit mode, you can check which axis, it should be the Y axis that you rotate it around 90 degrees and lie it down. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Let's go back to object mode and choose our particle system again. So scrolling down under the render, we've got it set to our object and the object rotation is ticked. We can now start thinking about making it less uniform. So we can put the scale randomness up and it's starting to look a lot more like grass now, but we want to randomize the rotation as well. So let's go back up to the rotation tab here. Remember the advanced must be ticked for you to see this. I'll tick on that. And we've got some options here for orientation axis. So if I click on this drop down, we can actually have the global Z and it should point upwards, or we can use the normals. And again, that should point upwards because the normals of this plane are pointing upwards. But if I had a sort of curved shape, it would be pointing out from the normals. So global Z makes the most sense because grass always grows upwards towards the light but it's all really uniform in terms of the rotation. We can randomize this a bit. If I turn this up, this randomized just under the orientation axis, but if I turn it up too much, it rotates it all around the place in different directions. So we only want a bit of randomness away from the global Z, but there's some more randomization options here. Now the phase is actually the rotation around the global Z. So this orientation axis here, the phase is the rotation around that axis. So the phase here doesn't make too much difference. If I bring my randomization back down to zero, you can see it's just rotating them all together. What does make a big difference is this randomized phase here. So that Z axis, it's randomizing that, and we can put it right up, get a nice lot of randomness there, and it looks far more organic. We can again add a little bit of randomness to this axis here, but remember that's pushing it, if I go too far, away from the Z axis. But a little bit there will help add that sort of organic feel. Okay, so those are the things we need to change. One last point that's worth pointing out is the hair length. And you can see I can change the size of the length of the hair. Now that's pretty much the same as the scale here, except you can get a bit more randomness if you combine these two scales together. But you can just play with those two and see what you come up with for a nice organic feel. Okay, so let's scroll back up to the top and create our second particle system. So click on the plus sign, 
click on the hair so we don't have these funny balls and then we've got these strands we need to choose our object so let's scroll down to the render settings here under render as we need to change that from path down to object scroll down a bit further choose our object so I'll choose the next one along and that should be on its side so what we need to do is click on our object the rotation is all set to zero and if I go R then Y it's not doing anything because actually the rotation needs to be set to zero and I need to do this in edit mode so in edit mode R then Y lie it down and hopefully this will point upwards but there's something gone wrong first of all let's bring our object pivot point into the center we can do this in edit mode so I can go to top view and press G to grab and move it along there and upwards you can also do it in object mode so tab to object mode and you've got some options up here and we've got origins there and then when I press G then Z I can move just the object origin do remember to turn that back off though okay so it's the same as the other one it's got rotation zero much like this one and it's lying on its side but it's not actually working it's still coming out this way so let's click on our particle system and think what's going wrong let's scroll down a bit and there's the object rotation when I tick that it moves upwards so do remember to have that ticked so we need a bit of randomness so let's change the scale give that a nice bit of randomness and we can make this one a smaller grass than the other one so we've got sort of different heights and I'm finding the increments here a bit too much so I can bring the scale down here and bring it up here like I say you can play with the difference between these two but we're getting a nice organic look here now but what I need to do next is get some variation in the rotation of this second one it's difficult to see the second one on its own at the moment so let's scroll up and hide the first one so you're hiding it in the viewport and now I can only see the second one I can see we've got that really uniform look so let's scroll down and I can't see my rotation options that's because I haven't ticked the advanced so remember to tick the advanced and there it is I can then tick on that scroll down a bit and velocity slash hair is working at the moment I can also press the global Z and that will also point upwards remember we can randomize the upward pointing with that randomize there and we can also randomize the phase which is this Z axis rotation here by using the randomize phase option so nice lot of randomness there okay so that's pretty much set up now what I didn't mention with the other one is that we've got an emission number here so we can change this to something like 2000 we've got lots and lots of grass there or we could have less of this type grass and it could be very long this one and then combining that with more of the lower length grass you can see that we've got these sort of clumps sticking out and more of the lower grass so the first particle system has a thousand this one has 500 now if you've got a huge plane with lots of grass you'll want to experiment with the children option and that will give you extras in the render so it doesn't slow down your viewport but I won't go into that for the moment so back to the top and let's view our first one in there as well so a quick challenge to you then is to try out the third one for yourself so pause the video and have a go at that okay so with my plane selected I click the plus sign here change it to hair click on advanced scroll down to the render here render as change that from path to object I'll scroll back up and hide the first two so we can actually see that and back to my object choose my picker choose the third one and remember it's lying down let's click on that object and see the rotation so it's set to zero already so we need to go into edit mode select all and rotate it around the Y 90 degrees we also need to move that object pivot I'll just do this by moving the object in edit mode so G to grab and then come to the front G to grab so it's definitely at the bottom there back out of edit mode it's still lying down on its side let's click on our plane and that's because we haven't chosen the object rotation so now it should be pointing upwards and it looks like it's working but it's very uniform so we certainly want to have some random scale in there scroll up a bit further and do the rotation we could keep it on velocity in here but seeing as all the others were global Z we'll change that randomize that just a touch randomize the phase and we've got some nice organic looking grass there we've got a thousand of those combined with the thousand of the other ones to add some variation and the other ones we've got some lovely looking grass now with this grass you can paint it or you can just add a simple green color so across the shading tab make sure you've got your grass object selected not the plane but the grass is the one we need to add the material to and press new and this will be green one change the base color across to a green don't go too bright 
So bring the value down slightly and choose some sort of green. I wouldn't go too bluey with the greens either. That's just my personal opinion. I think grasses tend to be more towards the yellow. So one around there. I tend to put the roughness up a fair bit. That's for that sort of low poly feel. But there's much more you can do to this to make it look more realistic. Or you can paint your textures and make it more cartoony. So the second one, new, I'll call this green two. I'll zoom out just a touch and change that base color. Come across and make it a bit more yellow, but certainly less bright. So we've got a bit of variation in the colors here. Probably around there and bring the roughness up a touch. And number three, click on the new material, green three, change the base color. And this will be a bit paler this time. So a little bit less saturated up here this time. And again, a bit more roughness. And let's have a look, not too bad. It's got some nice looking grass there. The last thing you'll want to do is in the render settings, you'll probably want to put some ambient occlusion on that will create some shading within the grass and make it a lot more effective. For this final scene here, I also added some flowers that I made. They're very basic and added in exactly the same way, just a much lower particle count. And you can download this whole scene from the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.